Hey, welcome back. So this time around, I thought I'd do something a little bit different and go teeny tiny. So I bought, well, I kind of collected all these little tiny dollar store birdhouses. And I had an idea. What if we take what we know about making big projects and make it into teeny tiny ones? So we'll make each one into its own little house take the bird house out of it and make it into a little person house or a little elf house maybe. And uh, let's see what happens. Right, now, out of all of these, which one will we start with? I think we'll start with the little windmill because it's the one and only unique uh, little mini birdhouse that I have. First thing I'm gonna do is take that base off because we don't need it. With these cheap little um, birdhouses, they're usually just glued together so you just gotta loosen it up with a knife and just pop it off. Next, uh, we don't need the little perch because this isn't gonna be for birds anymore. So, and again, it's just loosening the glue and just pop it right out. And we'll also take the little windmill part because it'll just make our lives easier uh, when we paint it and put the roof on and things like that. get rid of this thing too because we don't need a hanger on it goodbye I just found a random scrap piece of wood and painted it blue or not blue we painted it green I know my colors we painted this blue and I filled that hole with some clay and uh, went crazy with the little drill and just punched some holes in it because I think I'm gonna put a candle in there a fake candle so I cut a hole out in the back so that I can fit our little uh, battery powered candle in there should be cool and as we go I'm completely making this up as I go so um, we also painted the windmill part just painted it white and we'll see what uh, we come up with I usually come up with a plan once I just start painting so um, I'm going to do just a border around because I know I'm going to do my fringed roof on here just like I did on the farmer's market and if you haven't seen that check that out because I'll show you exactly how I make all the little roughly uh, shingle roofs and um, I'm thinking of a plan of what we're going to do with this house. I decided to paint it, uh, it's literally called denim blue. I know we already had it blue, but that's kind of our base coat and it wasn't completely solid co covering. So the more you put on there, the, the more it's sealed in and it won't, it'll last longer for you too. And I like the little slightly darker blue on there. To deal with that little window because still kind of looks like a birdhouse so I'm thinking I'm gonna cover it with uh, some of my plastic canvas that I have left and I'm counting them out to see how many holes I have and uh, we'll make a window pane And 
I had some of this film left over, so I thought I'll cover that up. And as I was putting it in, he's like, you know what? I'm going to put a little heart on it. That'll look cute. And uh, it, with projects like these, they always start out kind of looking a little drab and boring, but you just keep building and building and they look better and better every day. Now we're going to make a door. I had a scrap piece of uh, wood and I just cut out some cardboard arrow shapes for the hinges and painted them black and found a tiny little bead to as a doorknob. I got a little gloppy with the glue, so I just, uh, with a paintbrush, I just spread it out a little. It dries clear, so you'll never even notice. And there you go, nitty bitty little door. to do with the windmill. I had a bunch of this uh, material left over so I thought you know what I'm gonna have a tailor or a quilter or somebody is gonna live in this little windmill and they had a whole bunch of leftover material and they made their sails out of it. That was the story I had in my head and so I just basically cut what I had left and I glued it on each piece.
and I smoothed it with the back of my nail and just kept it nice and straight. And uh, all that's left to do is let it dry and then I just trim the edges. Now it looked pretty cool this way but I felt it just needed a little bit something. And I had this uh, green twine and I decided to put it all the way around all the edges and it just gave it a, that finishing touch. And ta-da! Looks real super super cute. We're getting there. And now we're going to do the roof. I already pre-decided that I was going to do uh, the fringy roof. Um, I do like doing this roof a lot. I do a lot of different roofs, but this one I kind of go is my go-to besides the popsicle sticks and things like that, which I'm sure you'll see in future videos. And we just stack them on up. they can't stay that way so let's uh, paint them a wood color and it'll look better and better with every layer you put on there together to see how it looks all together and not too shabby. Now it needs a place to live. So let's get the base and we'll start working on the landscaping. So here I'm just uh, placing it to see where I want to put it. And I had a bunch of clay left over so 
I just had the right amount to just splooch it on there and I thought you know what she's gonna live on a little bit of a hill and uh, we'll make a mound I just flattened it out until it looked right and added some rocks and we'll just build it from there Here I'm just flattening it down so that I have a, a nice level top for where the house is going to go. gathered a bunch of uh, rocks that I got from our gravel driveway, dried them out, and uh, I just put them all over the place. It's like she lives on a little craggly cliff there, a little bit. seamstress needs uh, a way to get to her house so let's uh, carve some steps in here For the next layer of our plan I have a bunch of these little tiny trees uh, just get them from any area where you can get train set material and uh, I bought a whole bunch of them I never used them yet until now so I thought you know what it's a perfect scale for this little house so let's stick some in here we let the clay dry I'm gonna take the trees out and later on you're gonna realize I didn't remember where I put them but it left little holes so that you can jab them back in there pretty easy and I'm just gonna paint this little mound um, random rock colors and dirt it'll eventually get covered with some moss and grass but uh, it gives a good foundation and it seals in the clay too When it, you paint like this, it's just completely random, and uh, the more you add, the better. You just uh, put anything that would be uh, rock colored, so different shades of gray, some browns, 
And also, like I said, it, a lot of it's going to be covered up, so it doesn't matter, but it gives a good, uh, if it does see through, it looks like there's some rocks underneath there. to have just a little bit of static grass left over. I made these completely out of just leftover materials so I have just enough to do this little uh, diorama. So just generous glue and get my static grass machine out and uh, scattered all the grass everywhere I could. where I tried to put the trees back where they were. I was off on a couple of them, but that's okay. It still looks good. Last but not least, we have to uh, mossify our roofs a little bit because I can't leave that alone. And I had a little bit of moss left over, so I just scattered it on some of the roof parts and the top of the doorway and a little bit above the window. And there you go, absolutely adorable. And uh, I had fun making this. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all lit up with the candle inside. And uh, if you like this, definitely give me a subscribe and a like, I would love that. And we got much more to make. So see you next time, bye. <laughs>